A study into using solar energy to help provide power for a water treatment plant in rural KZN could provide solutions for many municipalities in the country. The feasibility study was conducted through the Vutela Ilembe LED support program. Their study proposes several measures that would see efficiency improvements, upgrading of equipment, improving metering and changing the billing tariff applied by ESCOM. To explain this further, we're joined by Monia Estedesen from the program. Thank you very much, Ms. Estedesen, for your time on ENCA this evening. Um, can you tell us what your study found in terms of the feasibility of solar power to provide relief from load shedding in this particular context as it applies to uh, bulk water infrastructure? Thank you. Um... Yes, the study was uh, the first one in this area, uh, looking at the sustainability of electricity services, uh, specifically at a water treatment works, which is one of the largest in the area. Uh, the study looked at the feasibility of adding renewable energy to the works, and it was found that about 10% of the works can be supplied from renewable energy. And this is based on the available land space, uh, including the rooftop, areas as well as the potential land uh, areas for, for this option. So 10 percent, um, you know, any relief is better than none, but is 10 percent uh, sustainable financially? Well, the 10 percent uh, makes a contribution and it will allow the municipality to, which currently pays just over 600,000 rand uh, per month for electricity, to make savings of 540,000 per annum. So that gives a return on investment period of just uh, below 10 years. So it definitely makes a, a feasible investment for the municipality, not only to get the power currently, but also for uh, going forward and make additional savings on electricity costs. Hmm. That's in addition to also having a carbon savings, of course and then to uh, increase the reliability of water supply in the area. That, that increased reliability of water supply definitely is a, a, a big plus point for these communities. What kind of other benefits would a project like this uh, be able to generate for a community, perhaps looking at you know, economic growth, those kind of things? Uh, well, if the reliability of water supply is increased, that also allows businesses to, to flourish more because, I mean, so many economic activities are reliant on water supply. Uh, then, of course, it increases the standards of living for the communities in there. And uh, in addition, if the solar uh, option is chosen, it increases the knowledge of having such uh, installations. It uh, provides opportunity for uh, installers to be certified, as well as for the operation and maintenance of such facilities, which uh, are increasing all over South Africa. So the entire system is expected to cost about 5.2 million rand to install. You've already told us about the return on investment there. Um, the municipality is expected to have to fork out 60,000 rand a year to operate. That's minimal cost, you know, everything considered. But, you know, with solar panels in great demand, not only by ordinary South Africans, but also by criminals, um, you know, do these operational costs make provision for adequate security uh, so that vandalism and theft don't railroad a project with such potential? Yeah, I mean, uh, it has been highlighted um, as one of the areas which will still need to be investigated. What are the security measures to be taken? But definitely it, it has to be uh, improved in the area. Uh, but of course, if the communities see the benefit and if they have a direct uh, uh, participation in that and they can see how it will improve the lives and the reliability of such services, we hope that uh, it will definitely be an, an option that is feasible for municipality. But yes, there are other items that still need to be uh, investigated in detail, uh, including for the civil infrastructure to be uh, implemented with this system. What, what's the scalability of this project? Could it grow over time to uh, you know, take care of more than 10% of the municipality's water needs? Yeah, I mean, we only looked at the, the immediate uh, rooftop areas as well as the land available, uh, but there are other space uh, areas available at the, at the treatment works as well as adjacent land areas available, which is not uh, currently part of the treatment works operational area. But yes, I mean, one can even look at uh, uh, multiple use 
um, in some areas have uh, irrigation activities below such panels. So it can also, once again, be uh, an opportunity for the community to get involved and benefit from this uh, type of uh, multi-use system. So your study has provided findings, uh, but that doesn't guarantee the rollout. What's the next step? Well, uh, the municipality is not an electricity services provider, but now it gives the opportunity to form partnerships uh, for the operation, installation and maintenance of such a system. Uh, and of course, it now has already proven to be feasible. So the funding uh, sourcing uh, shouldn't be that much of a challenge as to set up the partnerships for its implementation. And is this a kind of model that could be rolled out in other municipalities across the country? For sure. Um, there are many uh, water treatment works as well as wastewater treatment works that uh, take up specific land area. Uh, so that is already available and those facilities will have buildings. Uh, so of course you have rooftop area available. And now we have already the, the pilot study uh, that can be used in any other situation with other municipalities. Certainly sounds like a project that could have a huge positive impact on communities uh, who are not receiving the kind of service delivery that they deserve at the moment. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. That was Monia uh, Esterhazen uh, from the Vutela Ilembe LED support program.